It's always a pleasure to sit in for uh, the venerable and PLS Kwesi Pratt. And uh, I do this with glee. I'm excited that we're about to have this very, very important conversation. This evening, I've been joined by the Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana. We shall be looking at freight forwarding here in Ghana, some of the um, challenges bedeviling that particular sector, which forms an important or integral part of our economy. He is uh, a leading member as well of the People's National Convention that has also been plagued with quite a number of issues in recent times. Going into the 2024 elections, a lot is at stake for one of Ghana's most traditional parties, if I should put it that way. I'm sure he has a lot of ambitions heading into 2024, particularly in relation to the election. And I'm going to be asking him as well a few questions in relation to those aspirations and how uh, he intends to realize all of them. So it's going to be an exciting conversation. Do not move a muscle throughout this one hour interview. I can promise you that you are going to enjoy every bit of it. So without further ado, let me zoom into my guest for today, Mr. Samson Asaki Awen Gobet, leading member of the PNC, also um, the Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana. Good evening, sir. Good evening, my brother. I trust you are doing okay. Happy New Year to you. Mm. It's, it's actually my first time seeing you in a long time. I don't remember seeing you the whole of last year. Aside our last meeting around Nungwa, where we had an interview with you, I've not seen you since. But you're not looking bad at all. Well, it's the most high God. Um, if you believe in Lord, uh, God Almighty, um, you pray and sleep, you wake up and pray, um, you go and come. Um, you have God will give you the energy mm. and then the wisdom to do whatever you want to do. Mm. Um, without wisdom and knowledge, then of course, you can't go far. Mm. And so the one who gives the wisdom is the Almighty God. So I thank God for giving me such a life um, and also t to my family, my wife and my children uh, for understanding the nature of the job that I do. Mm. Um, sometimes I will go for a program in Accra here and people in my own town will call me and ask me, hey, after you went on TV and radio and speak like this, are you sure government is not trailing you? And I say, what, did I, what have I done for government to trail me? Mm -hmm. Are you sure national security? And, and I say, what have I done to national security they are trailing me? Mm -hmm. uh, I am, I speak for the vulnerable. And even the national security man will even trail me. If I'm talking about cost of doing business at the port, at the end of the day, he'll go to the market to buy things. And so he will want to get his salary. How much is his salary? He, so I speak for everybody. If including the president, mm -hmm. because at, at some point the president complained that things were, were really highly cost in this country. And so as a result of that, as a result of policies that the government introduces that hit my people at the port for that matter, it extended to the market and all of us collectively, including my good self, is a consumer. So uh Alhamdulillah, mm -hmm. I think that I can no other thank God than God bring me to this far. It's not easy. You know, I'm coming from far away from Kusunaba. Mm -hmm. Kusunaba is in the Upper East region. Mm -hmm. You go to Upper East region, you have to go to the Boku site. And so, you you know, we have the Boku East and the Boku West. I'm coming from the Boku West. Mm -hmm. uh, but our traditional setting, traditional home is the Boku, traditional area. And that is why I think uh, most of the time you see that I go for our festivals and camps. And uh, uh, that makes, that identify you. The unique identification is that what is your culture? What is your tradition? Mm -hmm. So... I guess came back from our festival. I think it was celebrated on the 28th of December. Right. And uh, I spent the new year at home, then I come back. Right. Interesting. Happy New Year once again. Thank you very much. So I'm, I've been around. I've not run away. You've I've been, been around. around. I've been right. around. Yeah. I want us to have this conversation in two folds. First of all, we'll, we'll look at um, that sector um, of which there's an association, mm. importers and exporters. And then you happen to be the executive secretary, a very important role for that matter. Mm. Then the next half of the conversation, we shall be looking at your political life. Yeah, of course, I've, I've, been, I've been hearing rumors. Rumors have been swelling <laughs> about 
real political ambition yeah. is that is we shall be having that uh, conversation as well so without further ado um let's zoom straight into uh fried forwarding uh, importers and exporters association of ghana the organization or the institution or the union of which you are uh, the executive secretary I think it is tried knowledge to every Dick, Tom, and Harry living in this country that we are in very harsh economic times. The president is aware, his cabinet ministers are, is aware, the opposition is aware, the average Ghanaian is aware. We feel it in our pockets. Now, before we come to particularly the challenges of your sector, how would you say that the current economic situation has affected fight forwarding in Ghana. Okay, so fast forward. Where I sit, I speak for importers and exporters in the country. Mm -hmm. Freight forwarding is a different ball game altogether. Right. But it works in complementing the work of the importer and exporter. The importers and exporters. Right? Yeah. So if you are an importer, you give your cargo to a freight forwarder to process the documentation, the shipping documentation, and then ship it mm. on your behalf. Mm. If you are importing to the same thing, has, you give your manifest or your bit of leading, sorry, your bit of leading to the freight forwarder to right. do the processes and clear your cargo for you. And so most of the times we go joint meeting. Uh, so far as we talk of port cost, the cost of doing business in that port or our border level is concerned. Um, um, yes, as we rightly admitted, um, it is a public knowledge that um there has been uh 2023 has been a very challenging year uh, so far that trading was concerned in this country um the previous the, 20, the year 2022 and 2023 there's no two distant differences mm -hmm. i think you know that at some point our dollar went as far as 14 cities so immediately the dollar rise against the city then of course everything is thrown to the scattered because you can't plan and you can't harvest. Mm. Um, the the only thing that good thing that we saw was the last quarter of twenty twenty four, where we saw some level of stability of the dollar as against the city. Uh, that's the only thing. Then of course, uh, the last three weeks to December, that's where we saw that market picked because people trooped to town. And uh, to the malls, and to the cent market centers, and people were doing shopping. Um, but in terms of taxes and fiscal policies that the government introduced, be it the 2023 budget year and then the 2023 mid-year budget review, mm -hmm. I'm remember. I'm sure you remember the almighty trade taxes that was introduced that profit before taxes become a challenge to the business community. I'm sure you heard about the the, the increment of the tax component on the the what do you call it the the um, uh, pineapple juice the excisable tax duties that was raised that was that was raised in the media budget review um i'm sure you know about the uh, <clears throat> what do you call it the vat that was amended or that was increased in the media budget review uh now we are making paying vat of 15 percent there was an introduction of the 2.5 percent you know and of course, we we're also looking forward to see government in the media budget review whether if government was going to abolish the COVID, almighty COVID levy. Uh, almighty COVID levy is still running concurrently in our books. Then, of course, there was a tax that was supposed to up to go up in 2017. If the previous government, if President Mahama government were to continue in 2017, they were supposed to abolish 2% special import levy and then 1% special import levy. However, when the government, when there was election in 2016, and the new patriotic party won gov power and then came to government and presented a mid a, a, a maiden budget which showed the abolition of the one percent special levy and they requested that at the time i think kuku Kwaten was the deputy minister in charge of finance revenue and so he said they were going to collect the two percent leads and later they would have scrubbed it off as we speak because it's a sunset clause uh, policy as we speak that policy is still running concurrently and so it become a cost of doing businesses in, in, in the port there. Then, of course, ta port authorities too have to increase the tariff. I'm sure you heard at the point that even the DPHA boards have to call us into a meeting in 2023 sometime. I think, I think it was around May, then or whatever, where he asked that there was a drop, sub 
reduction, deep reduction of import. So he wanted to find out why, what, why, what was raging, and that letter leak uh, to the media, and it, it was all over. I'm sure your news, your own media houses reported it. The truth of the matter is because of there was a total reduction or abolishment of the benchmark values that saw the uh, an upsurge of import duties at the port, uh, where someone used to import. A commodity in pay like let's say eighty thousand Ghana cities. Suddenly the person have ended paying over three hundred thousand Ghana cities. Guess one container. So you can imagine how if you to pay clear a cargo and pay eighty thousand, now you have to pay like three hundred thousand. How much are you going to make sales? So it come back to the cost of doing business in the market as well. because anything that hits the the business person at the market at, at the port, you have to translate. You have to transfer. Um, so there was an effect on the side effect on we the consumers. I'm a consumer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People thought I speak AI because I am the important as well as switching boss. Then for that matter, I get everything free. No, there's no freebies anyway. I also go to market. Uh, if I don't go to market myself, my wife goes to market. Okay, and my my siblings also goes to market. My family goes to market. <laughs> you understand? And so we all find ourselves in shit because uh, cost of doing business was high in this country at at some point. And so I will tell you that in the trading businesses, uh, there has been a so much merit of issues that if we say we are going to discuss the challenges face business community in 2023, fast forward to 2024, I don't think we'll end it yet. One hour will, will, will not be will able not be enough. and it will not be enough. And there's merit of issues. Shipping lines are also charging as we speak. I think 2023, we are discussed about how uh you will ship your goods i've given this water to you in china bring it to tema port i paid freight for you you know that the shipping line knows that if they get to tema port they will use machines to take this water from the ship so we call it stiff dooring uh services then we talk of storage handling and whatever uh shore uh shore handling and other things all those things will be done you have to pay for us. You have to pay dollars to the 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 the, the companies that will render those services to you. It's embedded into the freight that are paid. Freight here is the transport, the fare that are paid to you to bring the container to Ghana. Mm. Then I have come. My import, my agent has come to look at shipping line. It's like a shipping line. Uh, Lomo, right? Lomo has mandated me or give me the authority to come and clear this container. I've done the payment of duty to the state. So I'm coming for you to release me to go and pick it. Uh, maybe as I have these boxes, these bottles, about 10. So 10 here means 10 containers on one document, one bit of leading. If you say you want to release me, how many times will you release me? One shipping company, assuming my, my boxes, my container, boxes is maritime, because I'm a maritime person, I have to speak like, uh, that's why I'm using maritime terms. Mm -hmm. So box is the container here. So the container is is 40 foot container. So a shipping comp company like Maxline, without any malics, but that's the truth of the matter. Is saying I'm taking you ten thousand, so I have to pay ten thousand times ten. Mm. That's one hundred thousand. So you have to cough that money to pay cash for the release you just for them to release you. How many times will you press the button? If you go to Tema Port today, if you go to MPS today, the infrastructure that we saw there, the the gentle crane that we saw that they they using discharging the containers on timely. So I go under the days that if a ship called to a port, it take like two weeks or more before they will discharge it. Today, within three three days, two days, or even four hours to five hours. They've discharged you, then if you have to load, you load, then you leave the port. So that the number of days you're supposed to occupy the space and spend time, it has reduced. So shipping lines are even making more savings. Mm -hmm. Yet, shipping line will come to Ghana and come back to you after taking you a freight. Which including all these services, the shipping line will come to you and say, you have to, even though you paid freight in Europe, you still have to pay what we call local handling charges. We've been complaining and complaining and complaining I don't know if tomorrow the transport minister is going to call that meeting, bring all of us together and say shipping lines. Why? Because the same shipping lines, when our people divert their cargo to Africa, because there was this bank to type my reverser that saw upset of duty increase. So people were scared and take their goods to Africa and take their goods to Lome. The same carrier, the same shipping line that bring our goods here, same people take those boxes to that place. If they go there to clear their cargo, they don't pay those monies that they are paying here. So point is why? Is it that we don't have a law? Yes, we don't have a law. Which way is the law? Who who regulate the, the then on uh, 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 the, the, that industry? The Ghana Service Authority, Parent Act doesn't give them any mandate to, 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 to do 
to do uh, uh, regulatory. They are only to do the work that Asaka is doing here. Mm -hmm. It's to advocate. It's to do research and say, look, we have seen the cost component here. It doesn't, it's not, doesn't go in tandem with consumer rate with the services that they are rendering. Or it is total robbery. So government, look at it. Or else it will reduce the, the volumes of import. Because if the importer realizes that, and, and absolutely so, there are some importers who used to bring like 100 containers in a year. In 2023 alone, probably they have brought only five containers. Mm. As a result of the the benchmark values total the total reversal of the benchmark values affected him, the shipping company that I will bring five hundred on one document. Not that they are asking me to pay only ten thousand and go. They are saying pay ten thousand times the number of five containers, containers that, that become yeah. total rubber. and that was another huge cost component put outside government fiscal policies that the government introduced in twenty twenty three that saw a sub reduction of imports. Even though I recently we guess had. Uh, custom had the sector had to get together and said they they met target. But if I were having good sitting in my warehouse, that I I it is when Lomo come to buy that I, I take some. The percentage that you are buying is what I should pay to the state. But the state will as I could saw that you have one million goods in custom bonded houses, pay the money to us in advance, even though you have not gotten any buyer or sold it. Mm. Meaning due to goods that due to that you shall collect this year, they won't get it to collect. So what is going to happen is that cost, even though customs said they made a target, but I, to me, I know how they made it that target. Mm. So, 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 like you said, the attention has primarily been diverted to the the, the ports of Togo. Yes, because there, there was this total reversal of the Bema values coupled with the way the city was behaving with uh, with the with the dollar. Uh, it become it was a huge burden, and as I said, if someone were paying eighty thousand. And suddenly has to pay two hundred thousand, two fifty thousand, one eighty thousand. I mean, it call for what, what is what a is strategy? A new right, strategy, right? So, what is the situation currently? Twenty twenty three already gone. Twenty twenty four, we've done about um, seventeen days already into the new year. Oh. What is the situation? Is there is there like does it appear that there's going to be a reversal of this trend? Oh no, I don't think now that we are even having IMF in town, IMF is asking for more revenue, revenue interactions, handling. Uh, even I'm sure you heard me speaking about why would government introduce VAT on electricity home consumption? But mm -hmm. when we buy electricity, we know how much it takes. I used to buy 100 Ghana cities for, for, for one week. Then I, I saw that my, my consumption changed. I buy 200 Ghana cities. Then I move to 200 cities. It used to take me for two weeks. Now, if I buy 200 cities, it takes me only for six days. So, if you ask me, now that government is even struggling to get it, even the second trying to come in, because they have to do so many things, you mm -hmm. think things will come down? No. And I cannot use 17 days or 18 days to, to uh, yeah. business to say that <laughs> this is better or this it's is not better. better. Yeah. I think it's early days for me to be able to pass the judgment. I am not that type of study uh, researchers or study spokesperson who mm. will not do a proper uh, retrospective analysis and come and say this order. No, no. Mm. I strongly believe that um, going into second quarter, then we'll be able to know whether if things are picking or things is not picking. Mm. And by the first quarter, of course, of course, as, as, as I, I, I think I earlier stated that uh, businesses saw some business up during the last few weeks to the Christmas or to New Year. Uh -huh. the, th the three weeks to end of December, uh, there was some traffic mm -hmm. increase. Uh, so to, to, so to. people have, so I would say people have actually spent their income, surplus income. And so even do expect that this is generally, if you make sales, you make much sales. You won't make much sales because make much sales. people have actually exhausted. In fact, ever, People thought, including your good self, you thought the man to, the mood to end today, oh? Yeah, wait. So you take your salary. <laughs> I seriously do. do so, it. so, 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 don't expect much, much sales, much businesses in this early days. Definitely, uh, it has to pick, if it will pick maybe second month, third month to end of this first quarter to second quarter, then of course we can talk about business picking up or whatever. But as we speak now, I'm not quite sure. Uh, we can't talk about 2024. We can only look at Prospect for 2024. Oh, yeah. What is the way forward? What? Mm -hmm. So, so I would say, okay, we saw some. We still see some little stability of the dollar. However, if if the 
second tranche of the IMF uh, support doesn't come, then the dollar, the city depreciate against the dollar, then we are in shit again. So our prayers is that now that the financial minister said they have received the, is it the, what the, something, something, they call it, the, it's an economic term, uh, something, something shit uh, report from the, our external creditors. Mm -hmm. They have given that, that, that is what they have to use to present because they have to restructure. They have to re renegotiate with their, the, the, the payment, the repayment times with the ex external structures. So they have to give that balance sheet to the government of Ghana to be able to enable them to convince the IMF team that was here last week, but they've gone. I'm so, I'm so by 18 for, is it 18 of this month? Mm -hmm. That they were supposed to go tomorrow, eh? Yes. That Please, is, what? Yeah. To, 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 no. Ah. Today is 17th. Today is 17th. Yeah. They're supposed to go to the IMF. The meeting is 18th. Yeah. But yeah, so we've, we've, had, we've, had, we've had several issues. I mm. mean, this was supposed to have even happened somewhere last In year. In fact, they were supposed to come last tranche, yeah. last quarter of last yeah. year. But, yeah. but because we couldn't meet what they were expecting, mm. uh, they play politics in it. And here we are. Mm. So, as I said, uh, my I think fast forward, our prayers is that uh, government should be able to fast track that deal. Um, let it come on time because we all know what we expected at Coco Syndicated Loan mm -hmm. that could have come, but later I think the amount was reduced. Mm -hmm. I don't know if even if it has come. So we look at that one, then the IMF six hundred uh, million mm -hmm. dollars, yes, and yes. maybe World Bank is, is going to give government of Ghana about five hundred million or something like that. Mm -hmm. So if those things come, then of course. But if those things doesn't come, we my brother, see the stability we, we, blame, we will blame all of us. Right, yes. right. So uh, and so business community actually praying that the dollars will even uh, come down, down more than yeah, where it, yeah. maybe to eight nine or ten mm. Mm. right but does it only boil down to the dollar because i know that you you particularly you have been leading the charge against the high number of taxes that we pay at the ports mm. it is as a result of that that ghana as a country has lost a lot of it or a significant chunk of it you know cargo traffic to yeah, the ports in, in, and in, lome. yeah in 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 lome mm. we we are in or this government is in its final year mm. this particular administration mm. is in its final year mm. is there any glimmer of hope that maybe to um to maybe announce to the country that okay uh, we want to take the bull by its horns we are taking this and that measures and this is a political season too so in order to tell the people that to tell the ghanaian voter that look i have the interest of importers and exporters uh, association at heart so i want to eliminate this i want to eliminate that i want to show up this i want to my show brother, up that. you are wasting your time is, is, it, is, it, is it going to my happen? brother my brother the imf policy is in town we all know about it we know how they were supposed to fix things and get the second tranches Trans in time, last yeah. year which they couldn't and they had to travel to the first quarter we all know that the 2023 media budget review we saw some taxes increment and so for it's supposed to take off this year until media budget review come we cannot talk about tax any tax that is not abolished again mm -hmm. so so that debate doesn't even come at all you have to put it aside until mid mid year budget review comes. So even if mid year budget review come and they've come to abolish taxes, who are they deceiving? Who is the government going to deceive? You or me? Mm -hmm. So we clearly know that if even if they could have done something strategically, then they had the opportunity to do when they were presenting thirty twenty four budget. The budget, yeah. But so if there was silent in it, then there's continue to be silent in it. Don't even don't even think that ah, it's going to be suicidal. You remember what could afford it. Mm -hmm. Get reduced petrol, and generously when I had to vote against the government. Yeah. I don't think if I'm to be, if I were to be president, I could for do. I will leave it as the status quo as it is. So our current, the only hope that there is right now is, is that let the, the let the Bank of Ghana and the World Bank issue come, let the Cook syndicate loan Cook come, syndicate let the, the come. 600 million come. Mm. Then maybe the city, the the dollar can come like eight nine to to uh, to, to our cities. Then that will be okay. Do you, do you have high expectations of any government that takes over the rent next year on, on January 7 in addressing, immediately addressing the issues, uh, bedeviling importers and exporters? Well, why not? There are, there are some taxes that in, in 2020, 
three when they were presented the media by Jerry, you could have abolished them. The two percent special import levy. It was there already before we went to IMF. It's not that it's not part of IMF requirement. So it's supposed to go, it should have gone off. The COVID levy. It was there before you went to IMF. It's not that you went to IMF, IMF introduced. And so when the the very institution that instructed countries to put restrictions says is the restrictions is no more an epidemic, you're supposed to abolish it. I don't know why they still want to have it. So there are certain taxes that, yes, of course, the next government, when it's a new government, uh, can decide to say, yeah, it, this wasn't part of uh, IMF measures. And so let me take it off to give my people some relief. However, I don't know whether when they were signed the contract with IMF, again, like our brother from the Minister of Trade, who were rushing to say I was going to uh, put restrictions on 21 line items, knowing that the, there was a clear statement, part of the agreement Ghana signed with IMF, stated clearly that you cannot uh, restrict certain importation as because of balance of payment. It was there, but he was just running. He didn't, I think he didn't see it until we raised the issues and the IMF draw the attention that they come back and say they are doing consultation. Even that consultation as aspect we do now, I have not had the opportunity to be there. Okay, so so I yes, the next government who will have the balls can do that. But if they have the balls, you will not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Because clearly you have to go and tell it was it was only running in your country before IMF came. So it's not part of IMF conditionality. We lose policy that is IMF conditionality, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Those three different these three profit before tax, whatever. It's the IMF conditionality. How, how, how significant will the removal of that particular tax be? Uh, if you take someone uh, BOE, bill of entry, mm -hmm. and you see how much is paying for 2%, it's huge money. And you see how someone is paying 1%, it's huge money. Uh, it, it will come a long way to cushion the, the importer by extension the consumer. Because he has to assure it. Because it's part of the cost component that you, you calculate before you get the, your, your, the cost price, then you add your margin, profit margin, to, to make a final price. So that can come down. Mm. Right. Uh, if you're just joining us, you're watching Talk Time here on Pan-African Television, except that today's edition, uh, once again, has got to do with me, just sincerely, Kokwa Loma, so I'm not the PLS Commit Kwesi Prat. I'm, I'm sitting in for him and I'm having conversations in relation to uh, importation and exportation in Ghana. I've been joined by the Executive Secretary of the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana, Mr. Samson Asaki. A wink of it. Earlier on stated that this conversation is going to be in two folds. First, we'll look at his outfit, their exploits, their challenges, and then uh, we'll look at his political life and then the ambitions that he has with regards to the People's National Convention, the PNC for that matter. But, Mr. Wingobit, let me find out from you. Would you say that in the face of all of these challenges, and I'd want you to I want us to do a comparative analysis from, say, 2014 to this year, or let's say to last year, to 2023. Would you say that in as much as you have been bedeviled with a lot of taxes, there's still progress that you've been making in your field? <laughs> well, this is a very loaded, pregnant question that you're asking me. Mm -hmm. But let me say, without a Fear or fever. I strongly believe that whether if President Akufado or any any government that will be taken over, including my party, mm -hmm. in 2025, I strongly believe that there's a need for them to call the shipping lines down. Because if you go to our port, shipping lines doesn't contribute any development, any infrastructure that we saw, any equipment in our in in our port those who are investing is the port authority and the mps mm. and the private terminals so why are you if you look at the cost component the cost of doing business in a port only port authorities vis a the shipping lines the shipping line will take mps charges component take ghana port authority component and then take the shipping line the shipping line even charge more percentage than those those who even collect and then pay they also pay and they have the huge staff the shipping line have huge, uh, the, the, the port authorities, 
the GPHA has huge staff. The MPS have huge staff as compared to the shipping lines. Yet shipping lines have the, the chunk of the charge. And mm. it's a money that they, they don't wait for it. So I look forward to see any minister, any government that said, look, we need Mr. Asake and his people to come. We need Guta. We need all the people in the industry to come and sit down. And with the ship line, do your presentation. Why are you charging them when you are not charging this kind of money in other areas? Mm. The other aspect, whether growth from 20, of course, everybody wants to go for it. Uh -huh. I don't think in 2014, that was where I established my institution, important export association. I wasn't like this. Is that not it? Mm. I cannot see gray hair in me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Meaning I'm growing. So, of course, everybody going into business will definitely want to see some, a certain level of growth. Yes, of course, people definitely, even though with the challenges that I talk about, people probably have made, made profit. I already know. People also made losses, which I do know that in 2024, uh, people, and then 2023, because of, sorry, 2023, 2022, I know people who have made deep in revenue. When I talk about revenue, sales revenue has really dropped quarter by quarter, month by month more than 40 percent so it, they have been challenged but they can't get some wind up and i also know many companies that also closed down in ghana got angry mm. and closed down from from 2022 there about 2023 i know in many companies that fall up and they moved to africa's wow yes they moved to africa's so some companies there. have actually left ghana they have to africa's to do business there and and and, 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 and they offer and some to have gone to, some to have gone to other buy uh, rent warehouses or buy buy warehouses or build warehouses, bring the cargo to Lumi, store it there, and find ways and means and bring it to the whole pack. It's a real. It's, it's a denying real, the state. Yeah. Really. So when we say that, Minister of Finance and Minister of GRA should understand and reverse the payment values back, reinstate the payment value, but they don't understand, and also um, abolish some of the taxes to give some kind of relief. To say yes, you know, government is, is a fix. We agree that where you are, but who brought it us to where we are? It's the same government. I hope, I hope you get it. Right. Then now, you want to put rope on the important neck and say the important must you must squeeze the rock and get the, the water, the last water on it. Mm -hmm. So some people say we can't we stand with that squeeze. Hence, I divert my cargo. It's the government that is going to know your number will not be adding up, and that's why I said it is it is it is never done and. Take it or leave it. I challenge Jerry. They should come out to deny that if they do not go through people who even have goods in warehouses to say, yes, I know your goods in warehouses. It is when a state bonded warehouse. It is when you sell, you pay the duty. But with this, I need, my, I need money. And they took money from, from business community. So with this, this January, they will meet their target. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. They will meet that because that could have carried forward. Have you have you had any form of negotiation with government at any point in time in relation to this issue? Has government called? They, they, will, they won't even meet you to discuss this issue. To even sit down. No, no, they won't even give you that room to come and sit with them. I've been to the Commissioner General office several times that I want to meet the Commissioner General. Anytime I get there, Secretary gets tell me he's in the meeting. I will tell him to go and tell him it's Mr. Saka. We go and come by the man is in the meeting. Reverend Amisa said that if you want. You call him after whether how many times Mr. Saka, the executive secretary of important responses. I've been to his office. I wanted to discuss issues of that nature. Wow. Interesting. So because when you speak in this country, when you speak the truth, they, they see you to be to be I don't know, a devil or an evil or whatever. But I'm a necessary evil. Hmm. I'm a very necessary evil. Because where I sit the the things I see he will not see. Mm. The complaints I get, he will not get that complaints. Get those complaints. So I'm come to tell him that my brother, this is what I. Ghana is for all of us. Ghana is not for, and he's not the first person to have sat on that chair. He's going to ask for tea in the others. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the, the, that has been me. Uh, he's going to ask uh, John Mama Finance Minister what's the name? Said take in the That is me. That's Asaki. I speak the truth. Nothing but the truth. Since I came to the industry, have you heard that any entity uh, individual is threatening that they are taking a circuit to court because he has come to lie mm. or is defamation tree? Mm. I'm not that type of person. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Uh, for, for but there are some societies you have really, they have court cases, they have court cases. Right of court cases yeah. there. The, 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 but I'm not coming to, I'm, 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 I will not just come in 
ran you down. Remember when Damoa and other issues came? Yeah. I came I, I raised the issues. Yeah. So it's a custom best practice. It was there. <laughs> the person just saw it. At the end of the day, didn't they want, want the case? They won the case. They won the case in court. In court, I guess special prosecutor. There was the money, Labeka money that was collected. Why and a half million Ghana cities? You remember mm -hmm. that because of that, Labeka has run to pay. Where is that money? I hear the money was locked to special prosecutor asset management account or whatever. It was not paid to government chest. The last time I was asking, why didn't you pay the money to government chest? Mm -hmm. They consolidated the account. Where is the money? So if you lost the case in court, they return the money to Labeka. Has he returned the money? Mm. I, I don't come to one day and run people down. No, I speak on based on issues. On issues, right. I think that the, the, the takeaway of the conversation is the fact that due to the high port charges in relation to taxes, businesses have folded up, some of them having left the shores of Ghana to their likes, to places like Côte d'Ivoire to go you, you, and, and you, do business. What thing you even meet but last night they tell, ah, this government has disappointed us. Mm. This government, look, I just say, say the government has disappointed us. So they have no hope in Ghana again. The way they used to have hope. We have lost chunk of yesterday I had the the free zone boss, my very good friend, lawyer uh, uh this speaker of parliament, former speaker of parliament's son. Uh what is his name? The lawyer, the professor, Professor Eru Michael Quay, Michael Quay Jr. Mm -hmm. in a sample. And he was saying how much billions of dollars that they have brought over. And so well, fair enough, but the truth of the matter is that people have left the source of Ghana. That is the fact of the matter. Wow, interesting. Unfortunately, Ghana, unfortunately, the new politicians are very smart. They will not report the number of companies that have left the source. They are reporting the companies that have come. <laughs> that, that have come into the source, right? <laughs> so I put it to you. Go and ask, interview the GIPC boss, my very good friend. Uh, what is his name? Yufi Grant, right? Mm -hmm. And then go interview the the fusion boss and go to research general and find out how many companies came how many companies has wind up left then you'll be able to come back and we can do proper conversation All right now let, let's move away from uh importers and exporters now let's come back to your political life mm. i stated in my preamble that you are a leading member of the people's national convention you yeah. have been for a very long time mm. um like i said rumors are already swelling about some ambitions that you have. We'll come to that. But why are there so many problems in the PNC to start with? Because if you look at the fact that we have just about 10 months, 10, 11 months more to a general election, yeah, yeah. which your party will surely participate in because you've participated in every election as far as the Fourth Republican uh, you know, dispensation is concerned. Most of the parties or the two major political parties, I would say, as they, as they are referred to, major political parties, they are done with their presidential primaries. They've elected national executives. Some of them are even done with their parliamentary primaries. The MPP uh, on 27th of this month would be conducting the rest of its parliamentary primaries. The CPP, have, the PNC, I beg your pardon, has not even elected national executives. 11 months to an election why the why the internal wranglings okay so uh, let me say a happy new year to the rank and file of the people as a conversion party fraternity out there um i am saddened just like you are worried and someone will say that they brief you are crying more than they brief mm. i'm happy that you are crying more than us mm. we should be crying but we seem to sit unconcerned, not seeing what is wrong with our party. I'm so saddened. In fact, if you Google, it will tell you that the very first time, 2021 or 2022, when our candidate, Apasada, and his team uh, issued a statement that they uh, expelled the general secretary, and having listened to the general secretary, Apple, I realized that there was some bias towards her because if we said you are put you are setting up it, there was a complaint the complaint was referred to council uh, uh disciplinary committee as i could go and face the disciplinary committee and i said that oh mr abc has uh loyalty to you the complainants hence if i go he will they will be biased towards me the best thing is to reconstitute the committee 
and let you appear. There was not, not like that. When the disciplinary committee sent their report to NEC or whatever, that meeting that was held that they said they expelled her, I asked who were those the complainants? Mm -hmm. The presidential candidate for 2020, the, 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 the national chairman was there, the vice chair, the, the second vice chair wasn't there, but the third vice chair was there, the organizer, what, what, what women organizer, they were all in that meeting. These were the people who signed the petition. When they was going to take the decision to, dis to discipline the, the, the general secretary, were they sitting in that meeting or they would excuse themselves? I understand the president candidate alone excuse, but it was not only the president candidate alone who, petition, who signed the petition. That's what that's what they have forgotten to know. So you can't sit in that meeting and take decision and think that it's, it is fair. It's not fair. You haven't given the person natural justice. So I was I won't go with it. was the first person who issued a statement that no, they should rescind that their decision. If they had heed to my my advice, we wouldn't have gotten to where we are. The other aspect is that in 2020. I was a presidential candidate. I nearly won the election. In fact, at some point, the media houses were calling me that and were congratulating me. That's the, the thing, the whole thing. Then. I could have raised issues that I disagree with the figures that were declared for Apasada. And I have reasons why I could have raised those issues. But for the unity of the party, for the sake of the party, it's the party who made Arungo with Arungo with us as it is today. In 2008, Dr. Mahama came to Ashama and was looking for somebody to contest the parliamentary candidate. And because I used to sit with my colleagues, my groups, you know, boys, boys, we talk. And I said, well, if I get MP, I'll contest one day. Then when Dr. Mahama raised with the Fafa chief, a gentleman stood there and said, oh, there's one class man called Mr. Asaki. So he said he wanted to contest. So do. And the, the man said, they should look for him for me. And they looked for me. And I came and I said, I'll contest and I contested, isn't it? Mm. So a pastor, Jenna Nabla, was done about all of them, their names. We all got to know their names through is what? It's only the PNC. Mm -hmm. So I adapt in 2020. I said for the sake of the party, I congratulated the pastor and said this to carry on. I think a pastor and Daniba should have also seen the same thing said for the sake of the party. Dr. Mama in his blessed memory. I sorry, sorry, did I say Dr. Mama? Sorry, not Dr. Mama, God forbid. Um, um, Dr. Hilary Limam, because Dr. Mama is still alive. Yeah, so right. I can't say his blessed memory. Sorry. My apology to Dr. Mama and his family. Yeah. And the PNC. Dr. Hilary Limam, in, in, in his blessed memory, left the party in 1996 to Dr. Edward Mahama. Dr. Edward Mahama brought it out to 2012 when Ayaraga came. And Ayaraga came and left. And Dr. Mama came back in 2016 election. And left it in 2020. We were three president candidates. A pastor became number one, a Saka became number two. But uh, Reverend Ajay Debra got number three, third position after election. There was a winner or no winner. Even that election, we saw there were some children were shot, people died. We didn't see the, the PNC being opposition leader making any statement. We did this. There has been economic issues of this country to the extent that the city even the dollar even went to 14 cities. There was inflation went to even 54 percent. There have been political issues. The PNC has been silent. The presidential candidate has never, are you telling me, has no media friends, has no media aid that they can assemble the media for the president candidate to say. If I were to be the president or if PNC were to be in government, this policy or this issue that has come, the way the president is handling it, the way the minister is handling it, as a president, I would have done A or B. Mm. Have we heard the president candidates? Have we heard the national, the national chairman? Mm. So, this group, I told PNC at the time we were concerned that these people were coming to look for their retirement package. I'm not missing any words. They were coming to look for their retirement package, not that they were interested to come and brand the party. And in 2020, how many of you excuse my hand and take the thing from me? Oh, you saw how I was branding, I was selling the party. In fact, the PNC had never had such a coverage on the present candidate as compared to when as Ar Arungo was introduced in 2020. Party was visible everywhere. 
at least every week you will see a news item talking about the party. After Ayungobi lost the election, did you hear anything about the party? No. All what we heard after 2020 was somebody has gone to show 1.7 million Ghana cities. Someone has taken V8. What is a V8? And are you the only the first person who have sat who the party has uh, somebody has given or uh, 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 a businessman or a political party that say well, let, let us solve support? It's not even only the PSC party alone that has received V8 in 2020 in 2020 elections, or even money. Let's put it even money to, to support the party. The filing fees and other things, friends always cannot support us to pay. We are not the only people. For Christ's sake, I think the PNC should be talking to something positive and not money and VAT. It's a laughable. If care is not taken, I said it elsewhere, if care is not taken, the next president candidate could be me, it could be my brother Mona or whoever. We'll suffer because nobody wants to come and support me because if we support it today, as I'm a business, I'm just supporting people. Tomorrow, some other one of your members will get got angry and come messing names. Say this person give her this, this party give her this, this guy. No, 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 no. There is an off of secrecy. I don't know whether they were, it was administered to them or not. I don't know. Mm. If I were to be a pastor who contested the 2020 election for PNC ticket and the scammers and the general secretary were able to convince some regular chairman, some good number of regular chairman to start a meeting in Kumasi and say, okay, we need to we sack you. You and your chairman, we sack you people. I, as a kid, will not be the person to go to court. To challenge who be, who is a, who is the leader and who is the 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 the, 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 the leader. I will go. I will have got just gotten a, a consciency officer somewhere, a regular executive officer somewhere to go to court to challenge to find out that. So who is who now? But don't me run to court. A person has run to court two times on two on two cases. One that defamatory character that the lady the general secretary is embarrassing him. Two that they said they've sacked him. So you want to know who is now the. But who is now the leg leg legitimate leader of our party? Because my regular chairman, Bala, was, was made the acting and the leader of the party in the Kumasi meeting. <laughs> you heard it. So Bala has run to court. To, 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 I wouldn't go to court. I, as a, from the kind of knowledge and, and expertise I am, I would just look for somebody, one of the party's officers, to go to court, not me, and go to court to mm. challenge what. But the point is, President Mama said something some years ago. If they said Asake is a thief, Asake is a thief, Asake is a corrupt, and I don't come to fight it, people will take it to be true. So the, the president candidate the has been too blessed, too blessed. Like a, it's a, he has been, he has been so mute that since after 2020, all the statements, the issues of what is coming, whether we are supporting government on this, we are supporting government on this, is come from the general secretary. Mm. One thing I saw the 2020 elections, the current crop of leadership of our party didn't understand is that we don't take boardroom wrangling to outside. Mm. If you go into boardroom to discuss issues, we are one, two, three, four in the here. If two of us or three of us are saying, Madam, it doesn't mean, Madam, if she walk out and the media person asks, Madam, what happened? You should start saying, because you didn't agree, so whatever is taken there is baller. So, if I'm made a leader today, because of the background I'm coming from, and you also make, become a party leader, I'm an executive member, I will look for a consultant to come and put the two of us or the three of us in the room for two, three days. Coaches, what what is expected of us? What to say and what not to say. Even if you go to a boardroom to discuss issues that we are not even in support. Two, to let everybody understand your role, your responsibility. And your power. Who takes instructions from who? And why should you take instructions from that person? That is what's lacking with this corrupt of leadership of our party. Mm. That is what that is what has, has brought it to this far. It is it is it is embarrassing. It's a non starter. In 2020, if we are going to election in September to elect a president candidate, doesn't mean in 2024 we should do the same thing mm. in September. When 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 are you going to be there was uh, issues like that. there was issues like that. I remember in 2020, the lady and Bernard, it was a crossfire. Mm -hmm. But then I was able to handle her. And we went successfully. Why can't a pastor and that? And what suffers me, excuse me, 
is that Taniba and Apasa, your children could, can be like Janet. So how do your children feel when they sit in the, at their homes, their offices, and I think at their level, their children should be well, I mean, well-educated people and occupying places, okay, in good places. If they have given them good education, I'm only saying, I don't know their, their, how, how old are their children, but I expect at their level of their age, their children should, and finish all, most of them should finish um, higher education and probably is out there. If they sit in the at home and their offices and they hear how what is the kind of statement that they made against attributed to their fathers, how do they feel? So if I were to be a pastor or man, then I would have even write my letter, my own letter say I resign. You resign. Just to keep my 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 my, Your image. my image intact. Exactly right. But let me advise them. Mm. It will be I know they took the case to court. It will be good for them. This is a candy my candy opinion to them. To go and withdraw the cases because this is not the state against PNC. It is PNC people take the court the issued case. Why am I saying this? I, I will advise them to go and withdraw the case. I will advise them to go and withdraw the case to allow proper mediation to come to, and, and ready to give to, to 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 give and take. Okay, don't take a, a stance. Say this is my position. I'm not ready. No, when you go to boardroom, think and you go in that mindset. You will not get things res resolution proper resolution, and you think that somebody is taking sides, and me, you are nobody is taking sides. They should go and withdraw because if the PNC comes to twenty twenty four election without filing a presidential candidate or a parliamentary candidate, without PNC having election to have constitutional executive in place, regional executive in place, national executive in place, presidential candidate in place, and file for election. It is a dent on them mm -hmm. that during their time they brought the soul of the PSC party to because already the performance of the 2020 election was not to drive home about. Then you are the same person who took the whole case. No matter how painful, I know it's painful. If you haven't done something, they say it's painful. But I would advise them that they should go and withdraw the case and come back and let us go in and conduct an election. Mm. Wow. Wow. Interesting. So, your conduct of elections is directly hinged or dependent on whether or not that court case is discontinued yes i i think the the last time there was a meeting in accra mm -hmm. about i think the month of november or december that about um to il, uh, and there was timelines that was given mm -hmm. for the pnc to go and conduct elections uh, I think uh, March there about 24 we supposed to conduct the presidential candidate, which I declare my interest that if they should open, I will go and pick the form to contest. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I also heard the party NASA chairman also issue, issue statement and say no because there is case in court, but there is no case in court as to the conduct of the next party executive or presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. There is a case in court to say who is the bona fide. A, a, a rightful leader of the party and then deformation of character. But I don't know if someone has gone to court to put an injunction on it. So if someone should go to court tomorrow and put an injunction on it, then we cannot do the election. Mm. So maybe the same people who took the, the party court probably may, might go in, and, and put an injunction to it. I don't know. But I don't know. But if, whether injunction or no injunction, as it stands now, we are in dilemma. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm appealing that they should go and redraw the case. If for not at all, they shouldn't let their name write that, that history tomorrow that because of them, because of they were in court, because they took the party court, the party couldn't go for elections. It is not, it's, it's not a good story. Mm. And I don't think their children will want to associate themselves with such a, with such a story. That now, is you, coming know, from their fathers. Right, right. Now, you have said that if nominations are open for contest, you, you are going to be contesting the uh, presidential race of the party. You did so in uh, 2020 as well. Except that you were narrowly beaten, according to the figures. Yes. By you have the figures by David Apasera. Um, In fact, I can tell you. I, you see, I said I didn't. I, I could have could challenged challenge it. Yeah. You know, I went to election, and I'm I'm happy that you said my colleague Bernard was here yesterday. Bernard was a chairman at the time, the national chairman at the time. I pursued him three weeks to election that I needed the album to know how many people were going to vote. Even on the election day, I pursued him. That I wanted to know the 
the the the the when they needed money to pay something at the SD uh, at the UDS this day, he came to me. I gave money for them to pay something. They need we need to pay something or buy something that day for the election. And I asked my brother, so what about the, the album? I couldn't get the album to the election card till they came and declared it. They figured that he got thousand three one and I got eight seven hundred eighty nine vote. And the other one got four hundred and something vote. But however, I, I said okay, it wasn't my time. So let the old man go. I congratulated him. Uh, but as I said, I declared in my home, in my village, Kusinaba, um, that if they should open the nomination today, I, I Samson Asaka, I, I, I shall be going to contest the second time. I hope and pray that. And I know, I'm around me and Bernard. I'm told Bernard is going. But you know, but you know Bernard is the chief. <laughs> the good people of Bunkrugulu, I made him the youth chief. I'm sure from the youth chief, he will metamorphose to become Sankana, maybe Sankana, he's come from Sankana in, uh, in the Upper West region. The good people of Upper West, I'm sorry, will look for another town and make him a proper chief. Because the chief fits him. And I don't think he should come to mingle himself with the, with the politicians. He should leave the PNC flag better for Asake. Uh, however, I think that I'm not afraid of Bennett. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not scared with him a bit. Um, Bernard got the candidate against me in 20, put up a candidate against me in 2020, and I beat him recently. I had 789 votes, his candidate had 400 votes. So, yeah, if Bernard he, brought him. Yeah, Bernard brought him. It was else, it was no, you can put, you can put the, the phone. Everybody, just, everybody in the PS knew that Reverend Ajay Debra was brought by to Bernard Bona. And so, if he wasn't brought by him, it was Bernard Bona was supporting him because in, in some of the regional tour, I could see myself. What was happening? I cannot sit here and say it, but if Bernard were to be here, I can challenge him, but he's not here. Yes, but I can tell you, uh, I'm not scared a bit. I have respect for Bernard, but I don't think in terms of the contest, he will beat me. I something like that. Look at the number I, I, I pulled in, in 2020. And the PNC people themselves, the rank and file of the party knows that Asake has, has, has repositioned himself, has rebranded myself. In fact, I'm a brand master. I will be able to sell the PNC within one month for Daniel. I won't go to the name that you mentioned. All the four corners of this country is well known. So you cannot take a product that you are not going to run. And of course, if you are taking a window to PNC election, nobody will point a left finger at him. But there's somebody, I mean, there are people who will vote them to, the, to be the next leader of the PNC. People, people have already cited their minds, oh, yeah, this person, oh, but this person is this people, you see? It is not a we see you. <laughs> but, but the people they out there, the people out there knows that <laughs> if you put Arungovit in Bernard, the PNC, they would better go for uh, Arungovit because Arungovit is an asset to the party. Arungovit would not, would not, would not come to the party and people say, oh, but Arungovit is, is, is a, a or B. No, I am for PNC and I will mean for PNC. Do you think this is going to be a friendly rivalry? Oh, why not? <laughs> but that is just, I don't, I don't know. I am mean, a man who is a senior, but but I think we are brothers. Um, we respect ourselves, mm -hmm. and so for for that matter, to restrain our 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 followers, uh, not to attack uh, or yeah. say things that the rule will not say things to run down ourselves. I'm not sure our our supporters should do that. But uh, in any case, we are all men. You know, we are not women. We are men, men from the north, isn't it? Mm. Uh -huh. So we give birth. If anybody were afraid, I better should rather give, give me respect because we give birth to Upper West. Because Upper West was an all oh, with us, okay? Upper West, we are, you know, do you know we are playmates? Mm. And the, the Gavas and the Fafa and the we are playmates. Mm. Yeah, so we give birth to them. It used to be the Upper Region, you know? And then till we, for some time, then they carved them out. I think on the good time was who mm -hmm. they carved them out of uh, Upper East to uh, make them the Upper West. Upper West. But unfortunate thing is that if you go to Upper West, Upper West is still well developed more than the Upper East. Hmm. Upper West is well developed. I've been to Upper West. Upper West, I wouldn't lie. Hmm. They are they are they are politicians. The almost bad boy speaker, right speaker now, right? The Maguay, no, not Maguay. Oh, sorry. On on his blessed memory, I I mean, may his soul rest in peace. I I, I learned we lost Maguayungo. Mm -hmm. Used to be the interior minister and defense minister under mm -hmm. President Mama era. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, I'm, I guess this morning I wake up and this sadness just hits me. Uh, he's, a, he's a brother, I know him very well. Uh, but uh, on our uh, Ambrose Derry, the Dr. Benjamin Kumboa, uh, uh, the other MP was in the War Center, Rashid Pepu, uh, yeah. they have the uh, 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 Bidzidim. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have really done well. Those, new politicians those, those, coming up. Yes, yeah. those guys have really... If you go to Upper West and see how 
Upper West has developed as compared to Upper East. No, no, no. You won't believe that Upper East gave birth to Upper West. Maybe, maybe I respect, the, the, the I respect, conflict, I respect, you, you, I respect you them. Think, you think that the conflict in... No, the, in, there's conflict in Morocco. It's not in the regional capital. I'm talking about regional When you go to regional capital, when you even go beyond the regional capital, you see development. Right. Uh -huh. It's their politicians. Our, really, our politicians didn't take that opportunity. Mm. Look, you go to places like Zebla. I'm coming from the Zebla constituency. Mm -hmm. We are one of the longest sitting MP, Honorable Kulisa Apple. Mm -hmm. Since 1992, it was only 2004 that, uh, 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 in his best memory, Honorable Ndebure won the election. Then, 2016, Fusini, Dr. Fusini came. And uh, so he came back, he lost to Ndebure 204, came back 208, lost to uh, uh, Dr. Fusini in 2016, 20, uh, uh, came back 2020. Right, yeah, came back 2020 20, elections. Yeah. So, Honor Apula has been, and we can't boast of a nursing college in, in, in Zebla. Mm. We can't boast of training college in Zebla. There's no any high tertiary education, education institution right. in, in, in Zebla. Right. But, so you, so you see, we have the longest sitting MPs. We have we fine, fine gentlemen. They, I think their mind didn't go to the area. We have places that is not grown, and then they have nursing college, they have teacher training colleges. I hope you get what I'm saying. Mm. They have this school of those things that developed the place. Are you getting it? The Boku area is the largest population so far as Upper East Crossing. We don't have any university apart from only the Boa Training College that we have. Mm. And the Boku Nation College. That's all. Mm. So so there's so many things that I think that the Upper West people really fought. It's a massive cake. When you go there and lobby, they will bring it to your place. UDS narratives are all in mm. in in war. Mm. Even though Bulga, we have the UDS, that is the Vrengo campus. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about when you go to when you get to Bulga itself and they say this is the regional capital. You'll be sad. You believe it. You right. believe it. That's um, the fact of the matter. And our time is up, so this will be my final question to you. Mm. Why should the PNC people uh, consider something Asaki Awengo Pit as oh. their flag bearer for 2024? The PNC rank and file all you know that asaki is a household name in Ghanaian politics we don't take somebody that look as we speak today if you put me out there and put a pastor out there when people are part they say ah, this asaki i won't go standing there in fact they will know that there was the if they say the show who are the PSC candidate if you want to go and do Soviet trade who was the PSC president candidate they'll say i will go by me it wasn't me it was Abasra. because that's how popular i am that's one thing two I have I I've been with the business community in every country is the business is the entrepreneurs is the business community that handle countries mm -hmm. that support government to take care of health take care of education take care of uh, agriculture take care of so many sectors is that not it security sector where the schools are not well paid they will, they will cause problem <laughs> is that not it so I understand the concept the economic situation the political situation of this country I do understand that. so that is why when they should vote for me I understand what we seek to put out there. That will hit so much that the youth look, no more. You will admire me if I'm a president, and if I'm on the podium, you will admire me. You will say, I wouldn't have voted, but I'll vote for Asake because of Asake. I'll vote for 2024. If PSC gamble with me and go and give somebody, forget it. If the PSC want to be cost for second round, then they should vote for Asake. Right. Um, I think I, I'm a successful person. Um, I hold degree in marketing. I hold masters in port and shipping administration. That's the maritime aspect from the regional maritime university. That's where I did my masters. I'm married with four children. I'm a very responsible person, and I respect the rank and file of our party. I think amount us for 2024. If the PSC should go, I will tell they should go for Asaki. I stand tall. Right. Right. Nobody will sit down and say that guy is part belong to party A or party B. There's nobody. Mm. Oh, mm. can you be punch? Right. Thank you. Very Where much. I belong to? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank I you. You're a member of the PNC. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so and much. And nothing more, nothing less. Uh, Mr. Samson Asaki Awengo, to wish you the very best. We've had conversations in relation to the Importers and Exporters Association of Ghana. They are work. So if we are going to my, my friend. Ben yeah, Mona, be tell him that he shouldn't, he shouldn't come here. He should go in. Uh, chop, he should go in. <laughs> in relation to the PNC, uh, there are issues, and of course, the very fact that there's an election in sight, uh, he has 
declared his intention to contest. Uh, I understand the nomination form, though. I think it's about 100,000 cities. Yeah, it's 2,000 to pick the nomination form and the filing fees. Filing fees yeah, I know and it, uh, we, uh, it's raining, but it's, it still is hard. Mm -hmm. We will talk. It's a minority party. Mm -hmm. I mean, the major political party couldn't do that. Why minority party should do that? Should do but that. we should no, be able to come money, together. You need money. The no, we need money to campaign, yeah. not yeah. money for primaries. Right. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Wingobet. It's been a, um, a very interesting conversation here on Talk Time. Uh, my name is Koku Alomaso. I sat in for... Uh, it's Alomaso. Yes. Well, I was going to know you as to me. I sat in for okay. uh, Comrade Kwesi Pratt. And of course, uh, hopefully next week, he would assume... Uh, his rightful place as the host of the show. Wow. I'll catch you. Bye-bye.